Today we're going to be talking about the MTHFR gene mutations. They affect more than half of the population, so you'll want to learn about this. In this video, I'll be covering symptoms, health conditions, and biochemical consequences associated with the MTHFR gene mutations. In a second video, I'll be discussing diet, lifestyle, supplements, and troubleshooting for the MTHFR gene, which I'll link up here when that becomes available. If you haven't met me before, I'm Dr. Janelle Sinclair, and on this YouTube channel, we discuss natural strategies for depression and anxiety. So if you're interested, subscribe and hit the bell button so you're notified about our new weekly videos. So let's talk about the MTHFR gene. MTHFR stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. This gene encodes for an enzyme that helps convert folic acid into the active form of folate, and that's called methylfolate or MTHF. Now there's two common MTHFR gene mutations, or I actually prefer to call them genetic weaknesses or SNPs, and they are C677T and the A1298C. Now these genetic weaknesses affect over 57% of the population, so they are significant. And the MTHFR genetic weaknesses result in methylfolate deficiency, reduced biopterin levels that go on to affect serotonin and dopamine production. This genetic weakness also inc um, increases homocysteine levels and homocysteine is an oxidative stress molecule and it's involved in cardiovascular disease and migraines. These genetic weaknesses also reduce methylation. So why, what does methylation do in the body? Well, it's a very simple um, process, biochemical process. Basically, you, it's methylation is adding a methyl group to molecules in the body. And as you can see there in the image, a methyl group is a carbon and three hydrogens. But there's over 400 biochemical processes that are affected by methylation. And so when we add a methyl group to something, it, it may help neurotransmitter synthesis. It may help turn genes on and off. It may help repair DNA. It helps cell membrane structures. It helps to fight infection. And it helps to get rid of environmental toxins. So as you can imagine, if we don't, if we have poor methylation because of this genetic weakness, we're going to have a, a lot of effects in the body. Okay, so for example, if neurotransmitter synthesis is affected, then mood disorders and d depression and schizophrenia could be an outcome. Um, if turning genes on and off are affected, um, development of embryos and, um, can can be affected and infertility um, can be an outcome. If we've got poor DNA repair, cancer could be an outcome. All right. So some of the symptoms and health conditions associated with MTHFR gene mutations include mental health concerns, and that's depression, and especially treatment dep um, resistant depression. Um, early onset um, schizophrenia, autism, and bipolar disorder, infertility, miscarriage, preeclampsia, and PCOS, um, cardiovascular disease, including coronary heart disease, stroke, migraine, blood clotting conditions, and lots of different types of cancers. Also, if you see down in the, um, the bottom, bottom corner, you'll see um, upper lip ties and tongue ties. I just wanted to visually show you those. They can be an indicator that, um, yeah, that you may have a MTHFR gene mutation. So when we're talking about genetic weaknesses, I just want to um, get you to keep things in perspective. Mental health concerns and most other diseases are not caused by one faulty gene. They occur as a result of weaknesses in multiple genes coupled with psychological, social, nutritional or environmental factors. 
So let's talk about the MTHFR C677T genetic SNP for a moment. There's three results that you could get for this SNP and on your genetic testing results. Firstly, it could be homozygous wild type, which means you have two copies of the normal or most beneficial SNP. And on a color coding traffic light system, that will be represented as green. Now, 43% of Caucasian Americans have this, um, this combination. Secondly, you could be heterozygous for the MTHFR C677T. And this means you have one copy of the normal or most be beneficial SNP and one copy of the weak or least beneficial or mutant SNP. And this is color coded um, as an orange. Now, 45% of Caucasian Americans have this combination. Finally, the third one that you could have is the B homozygous for MTHFR C677T. And this means you've got two copies of the weak, least beneficial or mutant SNP. And this is when some people might express it as they have the MTHFR gene mutation. It's, that's not quite accurate because you need to express which SNP you're talking about, in this case the C677T. But in this color coding would be um, red and 12% of Caucasian Americans have this combination. And this is significant, um, means one in 10 people have two copies of the, um, the weak SNP. And what this comes down to um, biochemically is the genetic weakness um, means that the MTHFR enzyme isn't working properly and if you're heterozygous for the genetic SNP your enzyme activity will only be 67% of what it should be that's a 33% reduction in activity but if you're homozygous for this genetic weakness your enzyme activity decreases down to only 25% that's only a quarter of the activity that it should be and remember when it comes to methylation, um, methylation is involved in neurotransmitter synthesis, turning on and off genes, DNA repair, fighting infections. So if you have these genetic weaknesses resulting in reduced enzyme activity and therefore reduced methylation, all of these functions in the body are going to be reduced. When it comes to the MTHFR A1298C um, genetic SNP, um, so you could be homozygous wild type, heterozygous or homozygous for the um, genetic weakness. Um, and you can see that information there. When it comes to enzyme activity for this genetic weakness, um, being heterozygous Zygous um, will mean that your MTHFA enzyme activity is 81%, so a 19% reduction in activity. And if you're homozygous for this one, your enzyme activity goes down to 61% or with a 39% reduction. Okay, so the, I think the big question is. If you do have these genetic weaknesses, how do you compensate for them? And that's what I'm going to be talking about in the next video. I'll talk about supplements and diet and troubleshooting if you don't um, tolerate the, the methylfolate um, supplement. So check that, out, that video out next week. Thanks for listening and I'll see you there.